Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome to another devlog. I wanted to tie up a bunch of loose ends in this one, but that didn't exactly happen. I did however get around to adding ships holes into physical space, which was a bit overdue. I also changed my strategy for overcoming procrastination, but I'll explain that in a moment. This last week has once again been quite unproductive. With the holidays and Christmas just around the corner, I have been a little busier than usual, but if I'm honest, I've been procrastinating a lot. I've been trying to plan out my days and then follow through, but I've encountered a pretty major problem. Whenever I reach a point in the day where I plan to start a different task, and I don't do so right at that time, it really throws me off. I start thinking about how I've already missed my deadline, so what's the point in trying to continue doing anything productive? It's a pretty strange and stupid thought process, but it seems like when I don't follow through on my plan, I end up procrastinating more than if I hadn't planned in the first place. Now, on the one hand, it is my fault for failing to follow through, especially when it's my planned unproductive time that extends into hours during which I wanted to do some work. However, when it comes to changes between two tasks which I consider productive, it's a different story. If I'm working on a certain game mechanic as planned, and I'm in a sort of flow state where I'm super productive, it makes zero sense to me to then switch to something else, since that productive state can be super fragile. Basically, if I give myself too much time to do something, I'll procrastinate right off the bat, but if I end up not giving myself enough time and plan a task switch in the middle of my productive flow, one of two things happens. Either I lose my momentum by starting something new before the other thing is finished, or I continue working, but then once I do finish, I'm no longer on task according to my plan, which then screws me over. The way I see it, this planning your day in detail thing might work for others, but not so much for me, at least not in my current situation. I think what I'll start doing is making a list of 3-5 to five tasks for the following day, depending on the amount of time I expect them to take. If I manage to get everything on that list done, I'll consider it a productive day, even if I procrastinated a lot along the way. This will give me more flexibility when things take longer than I anticipated, while still clearly defining an attainable productivity goal. I've heard some great things about this strategy, but over the next few weeks I intend to try it out for myself. Over the last few days I've been pretty busy, and I've been spending time with family, so I didn't really put in any work. Since I didn't get much done last week either, that unfortunately means that this devlog will be very short, which I expected to a certain extent. Pushing back the upload feels a bit like letting myself off the hook, especially after what I said about procrastination and deadlines in the last devlog. Here I have a very imminent deadline, so I feel like I should use that to boost my productivity instead of just saying I'll upload this video next week. Anyways, it's currently a little after 3, and for the last half hour I've been exploring the idea of decreasing the height of waves around islands. This is something I want to implement, and I thought it would be pretty straightforward. Since I already have the necessary shader code from a different project to calculate Perlin noise, which is what I use to generate my terrain, I was planning to simply stick that in my water shader and use it to calculate how deep the water is at any given point in the world. From there, I'd easily be able to calculate some sort of depth multiplier which I could use to decrease wave height in shallow water. However, as I was about to copy over the noise function, I realized that this might be a really bad way to go about it. Calculating Perlin noise isn't exactly cheap, and since my terrain is generated using three iterations of it, I'd need to do the calculation three times for every vertex in my water mesh. Although I don't think my GPU would have any trouble handling that, it's definitely not ideal. I'm still not decided whether or not the world will be procedurally generated, so if I take the hand-built approach, this would all be pointless anyways, and using some sort of height map based solution would be better. If I do go with procedural generation, pre-baking a height map and sampling that wouldn't really work since it would need to be infinitely large, assuming I don't limit the size. I could set up a system that generates these height maps in chunks on the fly as players move around, which would probably be better than calculating everything in real time. Evidently, this is a more complex problem than I anticipated, and I'll need to put quite a bit more thought into it, so I'm going to leave this for a future devlog. If you've got any thoughts on which approach I should take, or if you have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments. This means that hitting any part of the ship, including the crow's nest, will put a hole in the hull. That won't be the case in the future, but for now I'll leave it like this. Anyways, I'm busy tonight, so I won't be able to continue working, but I'll try to finish up the holes tomorrow morning and then squeeze in the editing. It's now a little past 1pm on Saturday, and I've just finished adding the hole points to physical space, so this should be working now. I can't really test it yet since the holes have no graphical representation and clients still don't even know about them, but that'll change soon. However, for now, I really need to record and edit this video as I only have 4 hours until it's upload time. Although this devlog is shorter with quite a bit less progress than usual, I wanted to upload it anyways since the next time I upload a video will be in 2020. I wanted to thank all of you for watching my videos and supporting me on this journey so far. 
It doesn't always seem like it in the moment, but looking back at the last few months, the growth of both this channel and our Discord community has been tremendous and so cool to watch. Without you, this quite literally would not have been possible, and I can't wait to see what's in store for the new year. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please take a moment to smash the like button and leave any feedback you have down below. I read and respond to all comments. In the next one, I'd like to make the anchor usable and I need to finish cleaning a few other things up. After that, I need to start thinking about client prediction, databases, and login servers, all of which need to be in place before I can put together some sort of small test group. If you'd like to join me on this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you never miss a devlog. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again in the new year.